<laughs> Count Floyd here. <laughs> Saturday night, kids. Time for another monster chiller horror theater. Oh! <laughs> ah, I bet you're good and scared, huh? Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Pod Stallions, the number one podcast for your scrapbooking needs. I am Brian, and with me, as always, to my left is Jason. How are you, sir? I'm I'm all right, sir. How are you? Good to hear good. your voice. Good. good. Now, now that I've had a trip to Michael's to buy more googly eyes. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Didn't know you were running out. Well, you know, the greatest thing today was Michael's actually put self-check. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I didn't have to wait for an octogenarian cashier. <laughs> It's a big day over yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we are discussing the passing of an icon in comedy, especially if you're Canadian, and that is the late Joseph O'Flaherty, who uh, passed April 1st. How fitting on April Fool's Day. How fitting, yeah. Yeah, and um, this is a behest of me episode because um, – I was a huge fan of Flaherty, and uh, one of the greatest, you know, stings I had recently was I went to his town of Pittsburgh to meet him at Monster Bash. Right. Uh, and he unfortunately had to cancel, which was due to the ill health that uh, obviously ended his life. And that's um, that's a real downer. Um, yeah. You know, I adored this man, always felt like he he didn't get the credit he deserved for his comedy. He's, he's um, quite a devious talent in the fact that he's such a glue. You take him for granted a little bit. You you do. And I, I was going to say he, you know, every, you know, we, we always talk about, um, you know, how much we both love SCTV. I think, I think, Oh yeah. You know, I think Python, Monty Python means more to me probably than, than it does to you. And to me, they're the, they're the 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 Beatles because they were the you know the first group that um of course after like um you know when when uh, uh beyond the fringe hit hit Broadway but that was a very different thing they were the first kind of kind of uh troupe that took television sketches and then put them on stage and did like little tours and were kind of treated like like rock stars and SCTV to me is about the closest anything ever got to that yeah you know? and, uh, yeah and in I, each I of them they're there are like, um, you know, in in groups like that, and of course, SCTV, the the talent changed a lot. You know, it, they 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 rotated, you know, in and out sometimes. Sure, yeah. But Flaherty always seemed like the guy that, um, yeah, he was just he was so good at what he did, but he but he never he never broke the way Moranis did or Candy or or even Eugene Levy. The amount of work that he eventually you know, God, yeah, for some it's, reason, it's like, yeah, he was, he was reliable and people, you know, put him in loads of things, but he never got that thing that sort of, you know, catapulted, put him into the next. Yeah. The next and, level. and you think about the people he rubbed elbows with as peers. Yeah. It's mind blowing. And, and, um, one of the things I, I think about a lot is, uh, he was of course involved with the second city before he, yep. you know, broke out. And he, uh, there's not a lot of anecdotes I remember, but I had this book in, in college and, and uh, th there's a thing in improv, I guess, where like one person narrates and the other person has to do it. Mm -hmm. And there was basically mention that nobody wanted it when Joe was the narrator mm. because he was kind of decent. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, you know, he's very, he had, um, he had kind of an edge to him, which was what made him funny, you know, a little bit of language to him, you know. Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, apparently he made um, he made Gilda Radner like spin and spin and spin around, like he just kept making her dance, <laughs> and it just it just made me laugh because I realized, like, you know, there isn't much on film that you know I think Radner and 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 Flaherty were 
ever done together for very much. Uh, but here they are. You know, here's this anecdote about them. You know, in the early days. Yeah. And he realized this guy that the the superstars this guy must have seen. Yeah. You know, and, and been like, you know, people looked up to him, and I just, I can't understand it. Um, there's just something. He, there's just something that I I don't know what it was, and I don't I don't think it was like, you know, he felt sabotaged. It could have had oh, a God. big thing. Or no. I, I just there's something there that. I mean, even Raymond, who, you know, what wasn't on, you know, the show and did, you know, stuff on stage, but then on the original show was only like a season or whatever it was. He yeah, well, became, Ramus, Ramus already had like writing gigs. Yeah, like, but he became massive, though. It, it was yeah, just, he yeah. became massive. Like once those movies started to click and directing and everything, and it was like, and Flaherty kept, kept popping into things, but he just never, I mean, I, I remember when, when Freaks and Geeks hit and it was yeah. I don't know if I'd read about it in like Entertainment Weekly or something or how I knew I, my, I don't know if I saw a commercial or whatever it was but like from the first time you saw it if you liked that show you knew that this show you know you just knew I knew after two episodes like this show is not gonna last there's no yeah. way it's too good and, and you, to be not, perfectly honest with you I never caught it when it was on the air because I was like yeah no this is doomed and, yeah, you know, no, and I watched like, every every yeah. episode, and, and part of the joy was Joe Flaherty as the dad. dad. Like I it heard was the, that so much. Yeah. Probably the best thing, meaning not not. I'm not saying the funniest thing here, but I'm saying that the thing that became the thing that that people remember him most for. If you took a poll, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like not just the people that knew SCTV, but because Freaks and Geeks has has sort of you know grown in uh the love for it's grown over the years and of course everybody in it you know went on to you know much bigger things but it became the thing that he became uh, like a certain pocket of the population or a certain type of generation's dad like kind of like oh man he what a great dad he was in the show and yeah that's kind of what he got remember for it. so to see him in that i just went oh my god this is you know, why did this take so long? Like, here he is, you know, and and that ends up being the, the 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 thing. Like, he never, I don't know what it was. I don't know why he, and maybe it was just because he, you know, I think it was one of the problems, you know, Dan Aykroyd always had, too, was that um, Aykroyd was always, you know, Dave Thomas, even, you know, in a way, like, they're always doing characters. So, you know, nobody knows quite what to what to do with them. Um, maybe it was something like that, or the, you know what, you, you, you may have a point there. I, I never thought of it that way. Um, but yeah, but it's just, I, I just can't believe the, the amount of characters he pulled off on SCTV. You know, everybody did an enviable amount, yeah, but um, his seemed to be like under the spotlight more than a lot of them. You know, you have Guy Caballero, that's the head of the network, and then yeah. You, Sammy Maudlin, the host of the hit talk show. Yep. And, you know, and then as the show progressed, and we were just talking about this before we hit record, um, they start to get like, like I'm thinking of like the uh, the 80s when they're on Showtime. Were they on Showtime or? Um, I think it was either Showtime or Cinem Cinemax or something. Cinemax. Yeah, it was like one of those things where yeah. it was like a pay channel show at that point. Yeah. And everything had kind of changed. Yeah. And um, they kind of went like, instead of, they, they actually kind of went, got smaller. And it kind of worked like where all of a sudden SCTV felt more like a, a, a local UHF channel. Yeah. In some ways. And, and um, I always, well, really they started liked... doing more, they started doing more sort of long form narratives. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the six gun justice. and things Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Or like the, the, the there's one where they're like, I think Caballero's like keeping them all hostage, holding them hostage. Oh yeah, because more... they're stealing ideas. Yeah, and you know what? Yeah, I, I, I will. I'm gonna go out and say this. I don't think there's any bad SCTV. No, um, no, no, no. I I I watch it consistently. I absolutely love it, uh, and I love those end run episodes. Even though you kind of like, you know, when they start doing like the days of the week, there's. You know, John Candy oh, starts yeah. to, get, you know, yeah. but then you've got um, this is the actress I was wanting to talk about. They added like Mary Charlotte Wilco mm -hmm. um, 
for a few episodes and she brings a whole bunch of weird characters but during that time <laughs> I don't know, uh, Flaherty gets a lot more screen time and he gets he to does, go kind of yeah. crazy with his characters yeah and I love he creates a couple characters in that season of SCTV where like he creates this character named Deward Weiss and like there's nothing he's it's really kind of a subtle character like he's just a guy wearing a leather jacket but that leather jacket is zipped up all the way to the top mm-hmm. and he has a real like hello i am Deward Weiss. if you're a drunk i will drive you home for twenty dollars you know <laughs> and um it but they use him a lot and it's just there's something really funny about the character even though you're really not sure what you're laughing at do you know what i mean like, yeah just, well that's like, just an oddball some and of the some of the later stuff it, is is kind of like you know when i look at it now i kind of go who was getting how many people were getting these jokes like who some of it so of course there's there's a lot that's inside baseball you know uh, for canada you know like the guy who's the oh, guy yeah. that does all the celebrity interviews that martin short did oh, and brian Lanahan, and, and yeah, yeah and, and uh, stuff like that phil's nails was gibner carpet and uh Crazy highs was crazy Joe's. I swear to God, it's like that. I swear to God, there's that, nothing different about a crazy Joe's commercial than crazy highs. Commercial. You know that 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 I wouldn't necessarily have gotten the reference, but it didn't it didn't really matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matching matter. some of it now, I just go. They really, and I've heard them talk about it too, where they kind of hit a you know certain wall where they kind of went. We didn't know if anybody was watching, and so we just didn't give a shit. Like we were just doing stuff to make us, you know, what we thought was funny and it wasn't about trying to, you know, they just, they just never knew kind of who was tuning in. Of course, you know, Bob and Doug got huge. And then of course, you know, they, they, you know, when I started to see those faces pop up into other movies, you know, when I see, you know, Pandy in Splash or, or, um, you know, Flaherty in, uh, even in Stripes, even though he's, you know he's not even in it in it much you kind of go oh these guys all kind of know each other like they must all know each other or like yeah yeah you know the snl guy see i wouldn't have known the connection between snl and the lampoon and yeah uh, yeah yeah. you know what i was and and you'd watch something like stripes and kind of go oh so i guess the snl people must know all the sctv guys they must all be buddies or something you know, I just thought it was the, there was like a mutual admiration society. I didn't know that there was that history there, which makes it yeah. that much more interesting. Yeah, exactly. And and that was one of the things that blew my mind when I was like 12 or 13, listening to National Lampoon Records, which yeah. probably shouldn't have been. But um, and, and I got to tell you, I found Flaherty really funny because he gets <laughs> to play broad characters on. And I just remember there was this one, I think it's about like hillbillies immigrating to america <laughs> like as if they just come from another country <laughs> and uh, yeah i, I can't I, you know i can't do it justice it's been a long time but i just i just remember flaherty was flaherty and ramus are really funny in this like F- F- ramus is like you can drop me off here i want to stand in front of the bus station pick my nose you know <laughs> Well, I heard the first time I heard some of that stuff, I think was Dr. Demento that he would. Oh, would I, yeah, the, I think that may be where I got it. And I think I went down to the library and. Yeah, the lamp- <laughs> I used to get some stuff from like record conventions that I would that I would go to to try to find, you know, certain vinyl uh, uh, things. But but, you know, he for me, it was like as a kid um, and, you know, being probably an odd kid when I think about some of the references i got in the in the, within the show you know like i i knew i knew enough about chinatown to kind of know polynesia town what was it polynesian town or polynesian town or something polynesian but town yeah you know what i i, had, I, I, I hadn't yeah. seen chinatown at that point yeah. but i knew there was some kind of <laughs> like i knew the godfather connections i'd seen that at, at that point but there's the first time he does kirk douglas when <laughs> is kirk, it, it, i as a kid like fell off the couch like oh, yeah. it's, it's like some game show and he's just doing the most basic angry <laughs> yeah the and when he's never he moving his voice. mouth yeah you know what that's exactly my first memory of joe flaherty that i can truly remember is a very early like global tv sctv where he's playing jack klugman 
and it's oh, like wow. Quincy Cartoon Coroner or something like that. Okay. And I honestly remember going like laughing at that. He's just because he his <laughs> Jack Klugman and his Kirk Douglas, they're 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 neighbors in his Right. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> and the, uh, the the choices that, that they would make on the show, the choices of impressions and hmm. and characters were just so um, we've we've said this a million times when we talk about SCTV. Like some of it was was so good it made you like the Sammy Maudlin show was so good it made you uncomfortable. Yeah, like it, it it you know that that they they so nailed what we now constantly refer to as cringe as yeah. the these you know a re, you know a, re, a new docu series about. Somebody's, you know, uh, uh, light. Well, the, you know, the cameras are everywhere. It, it, you know, there's, you can't, you know, there's a camera in front of you, and so you can't not be performing. And you just go, oh God, I can't watch this. They were doing it on SCTV with that show in a way that, that, I mean, don't you think that was so far ahead of the, the, the well, I always want to cite the, the game of like, you know, making fun of that sort of thing, that sort of cheesy. Um, well, that- that's you what know, I mean. Joe like, Bisco. like they were Adult Swim before Adult Swim, uh, and you know, case in point, the the days of the week is not that funny. No, but it is eerily an amazing parody. It's such a good parody. Yes. Of of a soap opera, it feels real. Yes, it's the and, it's the it's the length of time that it takes. Like it it, yeah. it they really take their time. With the even the music, but all, all the jokes that. aren't telegraphed either. Like you don't no. understand how like stupid Rocco is unless you're yeah. listening and paying attention. <laughs> if you're if, Rocco if, you and know, Candy, those yeah, Rocco, that, that Rocco with his giant sideburns. Like if, if my if I put on if if <laughs> I put I think I did actually put on Days of the Week. I guess CTV once, and my grandma came in and started watching it and <laughs> kind of asked me what I, what I was watching. Are you watching? Is this a story? You know, I, I seem to remember that. Um, That's and then, because it was, you know, it was also like usually the days of the week, were like half an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I seem to recall that actually happened, but yeah, um, it's a spot on parody of a soap opera to to a painstaking point yeah of irony but then like yeah you could see why the general audience went i don't get this and it's yeah, like yeah it you just, know what it it isn't it isn't a big haha but it is really funny when you think about it and flaherty had this thing that he that he, you you mostly saw with count floyd yeah. where where it seemed like he was kind of making it up as he went so when in some of his some of his characters, the delivery would be like, well, yeah, well, because we're going to. Yeah. So do the thing that we're going to, you know, and he's kind of finding the words like he did with with Count Floyd so much. It's going to be, oh, it's let me tell you, you, ooh, you don't want to you, you know, it's, it's, it's and, and he, he was so good at it that you just like, I don't know if, if all these pauses are there, if this is scripted, if he's just if he's just like this is the section of the script where it's like joe is going to come up with some weird shit he's going to say is count floyd or whatever but he he had that with some of those characters that just even caballero the way he yeah. just sort of you know well, it seemed it's, like it's it was, conflict though it like it's yeah. all based on conflict like count floyd is a guy that's trying so hard to be spooky yeah well nothing is going his way <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't have a budget. Uh, they never give him a scary movie. <laughs> and then, and then once the clip is shown, still trying to convince you. Yeah. After he's seen a horrible clip, going, "Oh, did you see uh, that? Oh, that bit with the thing and the dog and it. Oh, you know, he 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 on his face, he knows. I like, know oh, this is the worst. He's a company thing. man. Yeah, but he's still. Oh, did you see the part about? Oh, I didn't know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's also, look away. he's also the anchor. Like, Count Floyd is definitely Floyd Robertson, the news anchor with Earl Camembert. You think it's the same character, then? The it same is guy? the same character. because oh, there's the a same couple, guy. Oh, yeah, it's 100%, because uh, when Floyd Robertson uh, has his problems with alcohol, he hosts the news dressed as Floyd. <laughs> and that's oh, okay, I don't remember yeah, this at all. Yeah, yeah. 
okay, I don't remember this at all. Because that yeah, was yeah, a runner, yeah. that was an early runner, the the Floyd and, and Camembert, that that was earlier, right? Because it was like, like every episode there was, and you know, you knew the, you knew the gist. It was almost like the SNL thing where yeah, you know, it, Emily, Emily Lachella gets it wrong or something. From the, the, the improv, it was called Big News, Little News. Yeah. Yeah, and but so that you was just, an actual like touring sketch, and you knew where it was going. Like you'd know that that Camembert was going to say or do something, and stupid, and then Floyd was going to be like, "Where did you get that?" Was that's a terrible story. Where did that come? From? Like, why didn't you? How did you not know that that was? And it didn't matter because of the the, the rhythm of of the two of them. I mean, I think about these these people on SDTV, that cast. And I know there's lots that sort of jump in, but I mean, I think when we, when I think the cast of SCTV, I think of, you know, Flaherty, Candy, Levy, O'Hara, um, uh, 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 I guess Moranis and Short and uh, Martin. Thomas. Uh, and Thomas, like those what's yeah. that, six or seven that just, you go, oh my God, like it's just one of those moments of getting all that talent in one room. Oh, because sure, every yeah. one of them was, even, even, uh, who's the, not Emily Littell, who's the cleaning woman that's always oh, getting Oh, Yeah, that's, that's, a, it, that's a really it's great bit. Such a basic gag, but the just, you're going to take care of, oh, go to take care of it. You know, just the repeating of whatever's being yeah. said to her. Yeah. And she's absolutely hysterical. And it's just one of those, those moments where you get that kind of, it's just, a, just this, you know, these laser beam focused people that were so good at what they did. And Flaherty was just like, he was old reliable. Like he, he had loads of characters, but I don't know why he never sort of exploded. And maybe it's just because he was more low key than some of the other, just that maybe he just looked more like the everyman kind of, you know, yeah, he, Moranis he, I guess. Kind of looked more nerdy and oh, I mean, or maybe. Thomas never, you know, I mean, besides the, you know, strange brew. Like he, he never, um, you know, exploded, exploded. I guess the way you know Moranis did. Well, he, he did, time. he did, he did, uh, he did his. He had his. Um, he had some really strange pilots. Yeah, I've always, yeah. I've always likened Dave Thomas to being very much like Dan Aykroyd, in the fact that they have great ideas that they often can't um, hone down. Yeah. You know, like they, they have all, they have all these crazy ideas and and. Like I think, how was it? Dave Thomas did like that Rocket Boy show. Did you ever see that? Oh yeah, that's ringing a bell. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like James Hong in it. It was it was filmed in like Toronto, but um, and I think he was in another. Uh, Joe Flaherty was actually in one of Dave Thomas's uh, uh, pilots. I can't remember. Um, and you know, post SCTV, there really is an interesting. Um, up and down with Flaherty and a lot of the SCTV cast, actually. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, me I remember Catherine O'Hara being in um, uh, Heartburn. The 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 I think it was, uh, was it written by Nora Ephron, directed by Mike Nicholson. It was uh, Nicholas Nicholson and and Streep, right? Nicholson and Streep, yeah. And she, yeah. I think it was one of the first like, you know, non kind of wacky things that she had. You know, she was she was, you know it was like a straight role kind of. And um, and and kind of going, oh, wow, that's, you know, it's Catherine. And then, of course, you know, she's done, lo you know, loads of, you know, comedic roles, too. And Andrea Martin and I think Andrea Martin was a little slower to kind of get that, too. But then I think she did a lot of stage work. And then mm -hmm. I think they, I think, well, how many of those big, fat Greek uh, uh, brunt movies <laughs> have they made? Like 17 of those things. So everybody's done well, you know, and she was on yeah. she was on. Uh, um, only murders, uh, murder in the build, or only murders in the building. Uh, that that last the past season, and you know everybody still kind of knows you there and stuff. But but Flaherty would just kind of pop into things, like he'd sort yeah. of be, you know, uh, which what is it, Back to the Future two that he's in that he that he. Oh yeah, in, yeah, yeah. The best like part at the end or that, something. Right? Yeah. Yeah, which is like I didn't even remember until I saw somebody post it on. On Twitter, because I, you know, I, I, I don't know those those other two movies uh, as well. But you know, he was, and he was in not, he was in used cars. 
too. You know, I was just about to bring that up. I didn't realize he was in used cars. He was in used um, cars. Yes. He yeah. was like he's a also lawyer. he's also in tunnel vision, which we didn't discuss. That's like a pre SCTV thing. Tunnel and vision. that have okay. you ever heard yeah, it's 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 a indie film, it's a comedy. Uh listen to this cast though. Uh Roger Bowen, Chevy Chase, John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Howard Hessman, Lorraine Newman, Betty Thomas, Phil wow. Crock. Al Franken, Tom Davis, Ron Silver, and even Ernie Anderson and Danny Dart. Whoa. What year yeah. was it? 76. Um, and I've seen this, and I honestly can't remember much about Tunnel Vision. It, it's, but it is sort of like a, you know, one of those kind of like Kentucky Fried movie type. Right. Uh, there was a lot of those. Oh, you Blackout know, sketch I, movies. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm getting this mixed up. But there was one that, what was the, what was the Fred Willard, like the, the blah, 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 trucking, to, trucking or, company kind of thing that he was part uh, of. And they made one that was like, it was like Holly, it was like Hollywood Boulevard or coming attractions or something like that. And it was, you know, a dozen sketches kind of in the thing that don't really there's work. There's also right? Loose Jews. Loose there's Jews. There's a lot of these one. kind of. Yeah, kind of lost in those. But yeah. I have not seen uh, used cars since high school. And used cars is a is a gem of a movie. Like it's a totally underrated comedy. Mm. Because it's like you, you know, I, I'm almost positive it's rated R. And it was one of those like I had forgotten about for years until you know renting it. I don't know, 15 years ago or something. And went, oh my god, this is, you know, it's 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 a just one of those you know, kind of wacky 80s comedies, but not like, you know, not like nothing but, but you know, poop and poop and boob jokes and stuff. It wasn't like that, but, hey, but it's a great out, idea. Mr. And you know who's yeah. in it? Who's, who's, who's Kurt Russell's right-hand man? Garrett Graham. It? The great Garrett Graham. And he's, yeah. he's freaking hilarious in, in Who's got David, David Lander and Michael McKean? Yes, yes. Lenny the... and Squiggy, yeah. Yeah. You know, the the reason I've never... Uh, oh, Andy Joe Sperber. Oh, Betty Thomas, Dick Miller. Oh, I'm in. Uh, See, and those but, are all... Those all became, like, like uh, Zemeckis regulars. Like, uh, uh, you know, Sperber was in I Want to Hold Your Hand, and Flaherty might have been in that, too. Maybe I'm wrong. But they... Somehow the connection with Zemeckis kind of kept going, so... You know, Flaherty's in used cars, and he's also in. He shows up in Back to the Future, and like, you know, mm. they these these weird family trees that kind of start with all these all these people that know each other. You know, and you start to recognize. Yeah, I kind of like that. Um, you know, yeah, I love, I love that. I mean, like, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen a film by uh, uh, Ronald Howard, but he he puts this odd actor by the name of Clint in all his films. Oh, yes, I've seen. I'm more a fan of Clint Howard than Ron Howard. I actually you. am, too. Uh, I was just being sarcastic. With no, this. I know. Some kind of act of truth. He also put this man named Rance. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was it was. So I didn't see used cars when it came out. I would have seen oh, gosh, it on no. TV, you know, edited on TV. Well, that's, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. The reason it turned me off is do you remember like when they would. You'd watch an edited television movie and the swearing was so bizarre. Yeah. That you're just like, I can't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. Yeah. It's just those bad sort of choices. But then I started, to, I noticed a thing at some point, again, that weird brain that we had growing up where I, I started to understand they shot two versions of the scene, let's say. Yeah. And I would I... go, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. And I think it was Love at First Bite, um, the the television airing of Love at First Bite. There's a scene on the on the subway. He takes the subway. So after that first night of everything going wrong, you know, the coffin goes to the wrong place or whatever it is. And he ends up on the subway and some chick starts to come on to him or something. And I've, I've only seen it when it aired on television. But I remember being as a kid, like, that, that wasn't in the movie. That oh, was yeah. The movie. So they. They 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 would swap things out sometimes, and I started to notice that stuff as a as a kid with with certain lines of dialogue and stuff. Well, yeah, and I think even Superman the movie was like you know they jammed everything they could into that. Yes, there was a there's a there's a good like five minutes or so that were in the TV the TV version I think that weren't in the film or something. And yeah, like when 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 he uh, Luther has like the machine guns and the freeze ray. 
Um, oh yeah, the gauntlet thing. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was that was exciting. I, I was always yeah. like, why why wasn't this in there? You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> we, but as a kid, there's no one. Or Lois you know? flying. Yeah, you can't you can't get answers as a kid. You're just yeah. like this is, and, and your brain starts to go. I did I see that? Did they make a different movie? Like what what you know? But I would start to notice that swear words would get would get replaced and, and things like that. <laughs> Sometimes but, like ridiculously. Um, yes. My favorite was the jerk. Uh, you know, I think his dog's this is dog and shithead or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. They they just put stupid. And, yeah. And yeah. you could their mouths were still making the sound. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it usually was was someone else. Yeah, no, it wasn't even the, close. Yeah, and it's not like, even close. And and you could just tell whoever was doing it didn't give a shit. Right. <laughs> right. They just thought no one's gonna no one's gonna care. No one's gonna notice. They're just yeah. gonna accept it. It is what it is. But but Flaherty was just just uh, you know he was he was like old reliable and 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 he as the years went on you, you know you saw less of him like I can't think of anything that I saw him in the last. I don't well, know. Well, yeah, he, he would years. pop up, and that's what I wanted to kind of go through some of the stuff he did post SCTV. Um, we we talked about you know Stride. He, he voiced in heavy metal most of the cast of SCTV. Oh yeah, voiced he always metal. Did heavy metal, and that was and then produced he, by Ramus, right? No, produced by I uh, Reitman. Yeah, Reitman, yeah, but Reitman was connected to you know Eugene Levy and Andrea Martin through like movies like Cannibal Girls, and it's it's all you know. Um, yeah, he definitely was connected to all these folks. Yeah. And uh, Going Berserk was like the first thing right out of the um, right out of the gate. And it was directed by David Steinberg, who had a TV that. show. Yeah, I remember David, that on VHS, renting yeah. on VHS, I think. Yeah, and D- the David Steinberg show, um, he had one in Canada. And for SCT for CTV, not SCTV, hmm. and 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 Candy and Flaherty and Martin Short and Dave Thomas were on that, and oh, it's wow. awful. Uh, they, they they the Comedy Channel used to play it, but basically like the SCTV cast were in the David um, Steinberg show at the same time. Oh, okay, uh, but it just was. Uh, and then Short, I, you know what? Short did brilliant. Didn't Short do a brilliant um, Steinberg? He would he would he would mm. do in, in sketches mm. like just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it Short? Booga booga. Yeah. Yeah. He just had the voice. <laughs> he yeah, had the he voice really that, nailed. Yeah. Yeah. So so Stein, Steinberg uh, directed this, and it is very SCTV like in a movie. Um, it is not great. It's got Candy, Flaherty, and Eugene Levy. Uh, and the best part of it is there are a few, like, SCTV-style t- movie parodies in it. Mm. And different things that, that, that really do, like, oh, yeah, I wish this, this should have been the whole movie. Mm. Um, but it's got, you know, it, it's weirdly enough, my mother gave me a copy of this on DVD. She oh, was wow. like, do you want this? I was like, yes, why do you have this? Yeah. But it was... They were at the grocery store, and John Candy, you know. He'll like this. Yeah. No, they bought it for themselves. Oh, for themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. They also bought themselves Borat, and they did not enjoy that. Let me oh, tell you. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a, um, a bit, of, <laughs> bit of a shock after a John Candy film. <laughs> a middling John Candy film and Borat, yeah. But you know, I, um, I wa- the other day because we get prepping for this kind of, I watched a couple of things, and I think I might have even sent it to you. Maybe I sent it to my, I forget. But that one, of, I think one of the all time funniest things they ever did on SCTV, and it's not even that long of a bit, is the Godfather takeoff and Floyd opening with 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 Floyd the barber Floyd the barber barber and he started you know and and he does the whole thing and then and then Caballero he's holding the cat the cat's like trying to squirm out of its out of his <laughs> arms it's, you know it's like hey so listen and then when he you know the punchline being well listen that day may come uh, you know one day and that day may may never come i may call on you for a favor you know, and then Austin Floyd's well, well, maybe the pole wasn't so broken. Yeah. You know, he, he like backs up. But it's just, yeah. 
He wants him to kill these thugs, these other kids. Yeah. He wants them killed. And then maybe <laughs> just break Opie's legs or something, you know? And Eugene Levy is just like, as funny as he's ever been. Yeah, he just really that when that. he would do just just and, and Eugene Levy, I truly think is, you know, when he's not, you know, there was that period where he sort of, you know, you know, he just sort of did things and you kind of went, okay, it's just Eugene Levy doing his thing. But on that show, he just when he would when he would get into a character like Bittman and Floyd the Barber, and you just it you can't yeah, I would put that in front of anyone and say, like, look, I don't know you. But I'm gonna put some put this on, and if you don't think this is funny, I don't know if we, if we can be friends. Like, just watch this thing with Floyd and Floyd the Barber and and Caballero. But it's yeah. it's almost like they're in a different. What I'm trying to say is like like what 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 Levy's doing is the impression that's kicked up to like nine. You know, he's doing Floyd yeah. <laughs> Floyd the Barber, and it's an insane. No shit. Well, I, th- I think do. that actor had like declining health. And I think by like the end of the series, and this is kind of a little dark, he yeah, is kind that, of like well, I mean, that. Like, yeah, that could be, yes. But I mean, like, even on the show, like, on, his, <laughs> on his best day on the original show, he was, he kind of, oh, hey, and, you know, he's, he's oh, yeah, no, I, 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 you know, as a but kid, then, that, one, that one was really easy to get. <laughs> but then Flaherty, um, um, is is just doing something different. He's doing it a little more. He's doing. He, he didn't make Caballero like a. Uh, there were like when Caballero got started, it seemed to be more of a a bigger character, and then it starts to just kind of be that Flaherty thing where he's just doing it so well, but he's not trying that hard. And I think that's one of the things where he didn't he didn't stand out in the way some of the others did. Because of those, you know, like like the Kirk Douglas thing that he did, he didn't, you know, and 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 really when he's doing um, what's the uh, you know the Bitman um, um, uh, um, Sammy Maudlin, Sammy Maudlin, he's he's not the funniest character in the in the bunch. You know what I mean? Like he's he's brilliant, but he's not. It's Bitman and it's uh, Lola Heatherton and uh, uh, you know Candy and all that. Um, so maybe that's, maybe that's the thing that he just, yeah, he, he was that, that anchor, you know, like you said, like just the, the go-to guy, but he wasn't always the flashiest one, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that could be. I just, uh, you know, I guess I just kind of adored his characters and, um, this is, this is one I wanted to bring up, uh, post SCTV, uh, really weird tales. Do you remember this? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, I just recently rewatched this, and I do. Was it? I was think it this was a OS pilot for okay. like a, a tales, like a comedy tales from the crypt series, you know? Yeah. And it's very SCTV influenced, you know. There's okay. um, uh, the guy who plays Happy's in it, and John Candy's in it, and of mm. course, uh, Flaherty is the. I think Catherine O'Hara is in it as well. Uh, and Flaherty is the like the Rod Serling of it, which is perfect yes. because he's kind of doing that. Uh, I think he had a character on SCTV called Hugh Betcha, you know, Reverend Hugh Betcha, which, you know, uh-huh. was sort of a take on that uh, Catholic priest thing. He, he played right. a lot of Catholic priests. In his right. career. <laughs> there I was a remember. Bing Crosby <clears throat> thing going on with him. Oh yeah, the yeah. Well, wait a minute. Was this a pilot or a series? This really weird. This was a pilot. And then I, I um, think I saw this. This this rings a bell. That was eighty. Uh, yeah, that was eighty six. And then uh, I remember taping this. Uh, go, going back to busted TV pilots, this was a TV pilot he did with Kevin Meany, uh in eighty eight called Limited Partners. Oh, okay. They were like two guys, you know, trying to get ahead in life. And I I had a tape of this, but I can't find it anywhere. It must be on YouTube though. Um, was he in the, you know, the one that, that, uh, Candy and, and, uh, Levy did, um, Armed and Dangerous, was he in that too? You know, I don't think he was. Okay. Uh, let me see. Actually, let me see, because it's, it's surprising he isn't. Um, but I was just kind of, um, let's see. No, he was in Club Paradise. Club Paradise. Which has, which has Levy. Yeah, and I remember uh, as Levy and Andrea Martin and him, 
he's the pilot in that. Yeah. And, he, and I didn't know this. He's in Sesame Street's Follow That Bird as Sid Flea's. Okay, that I knew uh, from from clips that I'd seen recently. But the one, um, the Club Paradise one, was that okay? That was Robin Williams, and it was direct. Was that directed by by Ramis, or was it Reitman or somebody? Because Club it, it bombed. It, it it totally bombed. But like, yeah, it, it, it wasn't. This, it was the movie I was really looking forward to that summer. Yeah, it was like Jimmy Cliff was in it, and and Robin Williams yeah. and Twiggy, I think, is the female lead in in it too. Maybe. Yeah, Rick Moranis is in it. Brian Moranis. Murray. Like it and has the a guy, complete. the guy who was on Newhart, that guy that I was talking about a couple episodes back, that was in the first season or two of Newhart, uh, you know, the CBS, uh, you know, the second Newhart. Yeah. Show, he one. He's the, like in the married couple. I think he's married to Andrea Martin or somebody in in Club Paradise. And I always thought oh. he was a Canadian guy. Um. I don't know whatever happened trying to, to him. think of who that is. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Now I gotta, gotta, you got yeah. me going through the menu here. But that was 86 uh, Club Paradise was 86. Yeah. This guy's name is Stephen Campman and he's American. OK. Uh, All right. That's like, the guy. Yeah. He was Kirk. I don't you know, it's been so long since I've Kirk. seen. Yes. Uh, that show. I, I, I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, he's he was, a writer, though, mainly. Oh, okay. He's a WKRP writer. He's an SCTV writer. Oh. All right. Look at us. Um, okay. It's all coming together. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and he, uh, no, that's acting in Club Paradise. I thought he wrote Club Paradise. Yeah, he but I not. think I think he's married. I think Andrea Martin is the is the wife. And so is Club Paradise directed by by Reitman or or, or Ramis or somebody? Who directed Who that? Who directed that? Um, Harold Ramis' yeah. wife was in that. Oh, okay. David uh, Lean? Oh, it is a Harold Ramis film. I didn't realize. It was Ramis. That. So that's the one that Ramis did after Ghostbusters. Yeah. And, and I and was it, all for it, and it was kind of boring. Yeah, and um, it just kind of—it's not terrible or anything, but it just kind of. Um, it doesn't it have a point in some regard, I guess. Yeah. 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 It it really should have. Um, and then I guess uh, I don't remember this, but l listen to this, like how his. Everything goes for him here. He's in One Crazy Summer, which is um, a Savage Steve film. Um, oh, yeah. Not my favorite Savage Steve Hollander film. It, it's one I can't even remember, to be honest with you. I think I I prefer How I Got Into College or... Um, uh, one Crazy Summer is the one where, like, Cusack is, like, a, a wannabe cartoonist or something? I think so. I think it's the one that, like, Cusack, like, hates. Okay. Uh, like, I think he lost his marbles about it and i don't think it's a bad film and it's he's uh, also got booger in it yes yeah uh yeah, yeah. what's his name curtis um, it's got that one funny line where he's complaining about what a dead-end town they're in and and the booger character's like i can't even get good drugs in this town and yeah, he's like yeah. holding a can of ready whip or something that was the funniest oh no that, i think that i think that's actually better off dead is that better off, he's in better off dead yeah. too the yeah booger? he is in better off dead yeah oh, i think he's, he's in, in a lot of savage steve stuff okay Okay. Yeah. Uh, but then he's, I don't remember his part in, in One Crazy Summer uh, because I only watched that once. And then he has a bit part in Inner Space, which is a great film. Um, oh, yeah. Joe Dante, Martin Short. Yeah. yeah. And then, unfortunately, I do know this part. Uh, he's in a, he goes right to Canada and uh, stars in a film um, called Blue Monkey. And uh, I think I have this on Blu-ray somewhere. You know, it, I have it on Blu-ray because it's another one of those things that's like mildly connected to SCTV in that it's him and Robin Duke playing a couple. Okay. And uh, but it's also like it's a Steve Railsback movie. I like Steve Railsback, but he sure like as the years go on. <laughs> so Wait a minute. Hold on. Steve Railsback. The guy from the Stuntman and Life Force and you, you, that that actor is that who you're oh yeah about? yeah he's in a Toronto like and, and isn't he in Turkey Shoot too isn't he in one of the he is in Turkey Shoot yeah okay. I own a lot of I have a whether or not I want to I have a large Steve Rail in my house Jesus Mary and Joseph you got like it's not as big as the Vic Diaz set I I love it's how you've got like a a Steve Rails back shell. Oh sure, in, yeah. in, in in your home. We well, gotta prioritize, you know. Yeah, 
I guarantee you're not the only human that has that. I don't have that, a Steve Railsback section. I, you, you just I once sat in down memory lane I want, of like, I own a lot of Steve Railsback movies. I once sat like two seats away from him at the Sunset Five years ago when Chasing Amy came out. I went and saw it with a buddy of mine, and then this guy came in and sat like two seats down and, and to my right, and I turned to my friend. I'm like, holy shit, that's Steve Railsback. And of course, my friend's like, who the who the fuck is Steve Wells back? You know, and then I kind of whispered like, "Well, he was just, he was there's this movie called The Stunt Man, and then he was also in Life Point. Didn't matter. The guy didn't know who he was, but yeah. but uh, but he I so I can say that I saw Chasing Amy with Steve Wells back years ago, unintentionally. So I wouldn't. But wow, you're so you're a Steve. <laughs> Steve Railsback film collection. Yeah, I've got. I love I've how you it. preface it like I, it's a Steve Railsback vehicle. It's not one of his better ones. But I well, really no, what I mean, what I mean is that like I love uh, Turkey Shoot, and uh, Turkey Shoot's love, great. And there's something okay, else. Yeah. I love Life Force. Um, okay, now wait a minute. Then, now wait. Now wait. You love Life Force, or you dig it because it's so insane, or like because it is. I mean, it is. It is. I think it's got. It's gotten a a, a bad. <laughs> Kind of well, I mean, it, okay. It started to kind of, yeah. You know, the last like decade, people have said, actually, it's you know, it's not that bad. And it's and then I rewatched it a few years ago. I'm like, no, this is really ambitious. It really is. I it's think completely it's a concept that everybody couldn't see past the naked girl, um, which I get. But it was like it, it's got some, it's got some ideas in it. That's for sure. And I kind of like the thing. That's the that sad thing. That you, you could not see past the naked woman because, oh, no. and anybody around should have said, look, let's, let's, you know, we'll show it in the, she's in the cocoon thing. And then we got maybe one or two shots, but that's all we need. We don't need, yeah. let's just imply it for the rest of the, and, and somebody went, no, like, let's just go all the way. Just, <laughs> the whole time, the whole time. And, uh, you know, like, is anyone going to pay attention to the rest of the of the story or the movie at all? Um, but it is it is a it's one of those insane, you know, I think. It was I, I, I think I, I think it's, I think you're right. I think I've come to appreciate it more. I like its score. I like its effects. Like I'm I'm starting to look at it more as, you know, not a teenage boy, but, you know, a, a man look, watching a movie and going like there's some neat ideas in this. Yeah. I, and it's off the cast. It's almost um, kind of hammer. It's got like a like kind of a hammer yeah. element to it too. Great. Just want to let you know that we are like five doors down from Joe Flaherty now. Yeah, I know, I know. But you, <laughs> once you say Steve Rails back, and I gotta go. Okay, I we know. gotta yeah. we gotta yeah. dig into this. I, I want I want to roam back because this is a part that's really interesting, and I didn't realize how much he tried to market Count Floyd after SCTV. And this is one of the great tragedies for me was I wanted to talk to him about licensing Count Floyd before he passed away. Oh, right. Um, and, uh, you know, I just didn't know how to get a hold of him. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he did a kids safe video. I believe he did a lot of commercials at one point, like all the SCTV cast. You're saying tons, in, in, in like Canadian stuff? In, in and out of character. Floyd. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. there, there's a wonderful retro Ontario on YouTube was a wonderful montage of all the SCTV actors in commercials. Oh, fun. Uh, okay. It's, it's amazing, you know, because they're, they're they're Toronto actors. Somebody, somebody did and, a doctor. Somebody did a Doctor Who one too that I saw. Cool. Where, like every everybody who was, you know, anybody that was in Doctor Who, any commercials they made through the years, they did a like an hour long, oh, hour long well, montage. But what the Paul McGann narrating commercials get like? You know, like four days later, like isn't isn't he like a voiceover god? Wasn't Pertwee one? Pertwee was, and and Tom. I mean, Tom Baker, Baker absolutely Baker. was. Yeah, a million things. But you know, like uh, Elizabeth Sladen doing a car commercial, and then there's Peter Davison doing one for like a coffee machine or something. And, mm -hmm. You know, someone put that together. I'll look for the um, for the SCT. Ian Levine. Does any but Ian he, commercial? <laughs> Ian Levine, no. Sadly, or John Levine. Not. John Levine. He's, it, he's not in the cut, but, the, but, but, but what he did though, that, I mean, we talked about this before too, that I just, it blew my mind at the time was the com completely mental misadventures of, of yeah. Ed Grimley. No, that was, that was, uh, I think where Count Floyd, 
you know, he, he started to think, well, maybe I can break out. I mean, Bob and Doug had broken out. Exactly. And here's the Ed Grimley thing. And then, you know, I don't know how he got involved. Well, I think that his, the Ed think, Grimley so his, show, it, his it was brother such was, an amazing fit. Paul Flaherty is the brother. Is that who I'm thinking of? Because if you start looking at the credits of that of that cartoon, you got Martin Short, Dave Thomas, I think Paul Flaherty. Paul Flaherty, has, because I'm holding the uh, Count Floyd record. Uh, many he tried to release novelty uh, songs. I actually have I have the 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 LP and I have the 45 promotional for Valentine's Day, and um, he's got uh, four songs on this: the gory story of Dwayne and Debbie. Treat you like a lady. I remember Ragged Christmas Eve in Transylvania, and that was off Doctor Demento. They played that a lot, and then Count Floyd is back. This is uh, from wow. '83. So yeah, 83? they yeah. So I guess like um, after Strange Brew and I, that that I don't know about like I can't gauge your area, but I can't go into a like if I go to a flea market or a used record store anywhere. And I flipped through. I'm going to find the Bob and Doug McKenzie record. Uh, uh, because it's massive here. Yeah, I mean, not. It's not something I've I've found much in 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 the wild. I mean, I had it when it, you know, when it when it came out and everything. But it, um, but you know, but that, but that, but the fact that the the, the show was a cartoon, and then it takes that break. <laughs> and does, a, it, does does exactly what he did yeah. on TV. And he tries to scam kids, but yeah. they added that extra element of the kids going, hey, and then that's like way funnier. It is, but he's also not doing, he's, 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 he, he didn't have to change, because it was never like he worked blue, you know, when he was Count Floyd or anything. Oh, no, so it's it, completely. It kind of works. And then yeah. suddenly it's this live action section in a cartoon. Yeah. And then the set that they made around him kind of looked animated like you know how the co the coffin looked a little more like a cartoon coffin. oh sure yeah and it, was, and it was just this insane like okay somebody said to martin short look this this character's pretty popular let's do a thing and martin shorts okay i want all these guys coming with and yeah. i think Catherine o'hara might have done voices on it too she did jonathan so, winters too um, jonathan winters um and then you had this break this live action break with count floyd and then it was right back to the cartoon and all these voices. And it was like another season of Etsy TV. That's how I felt. It was like, oh, my God, it's still going. I, I felt that way, too. And during that time, I think that same summer, uh, NBC put together an SCTV like special. And it was just clips. And it was basically, I think, like uh, Guy Caballero. It, it was the only two people that were in the special were... Um, uh, um, Andrea Martin and, and Joe Flaherty, and they were um, uh, Guy Caballero and Edith Prickley, Edith Prickley. because they were the Congress had brought them up on charges. Uh, you know, I, like I can't remember what the, the conceit was, but I, mm. it, I just remember Guy Caballero was like, oh, I should have never colorized the beginning of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, well, you know, isn't there another? There's another SCTV where where Bill Murray shows up at the climax. Yeah. At the end. Yeah, that that's I think a days of the week. Is that what and, it was? Okay. And I don't even that that's a really like I, Bill Murray was my hero as a kid, oh, and yeah. I, I I remember being so excited that he he was in this, but he really doesn't really do a lot. No, he uh, just you keep they keep cutting to him like driving. I think he's driving like a convertible. Yeah, and they're 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 Rick's. doing the Mrs. Robinson thing, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. But it's like okay, I'm. 11 and i've never seen the graduate yeah <laughs> so, and i just all i know is like okay these worlds are colliding again like these guys yeah. that are on different things are you know it was like it was like when eric idol hosted snl yeah, as a you. kid because it was like it had been a year that that you know channel two the P pbs had been had been showing python and then all of a sudden there's eric Idle. you go i can't oh, i didn't know i didn't know more people knew about this you know, they're all kind of friends and they're all, you know, those worlds that would collide. And um, and I remember that Bill Murray moment just going, where did this come from? But that must have been when it was like officially on because it was 80. It had to be like 81 or 82 or something. Right. He was already off of SNL, I think. What that was point. that? Uh, then Murray was because Murray was done with. SNL oh, yeah, no, I, yeah, he was definitely off SNL and it, it, yeah. he probably was filming something here and they, they pulled that off. 
Um, I'm really not sure. I never really yeah. looked into it. Now, yeah, yeah. the other thing with Count Floyd, he did commercials, and um, but he also uh, was part of the Rush tour in the 80s. Rush would play a video of oh. Flaherty as Count Floyd. I think it's on YouTube. Oh, and this is like, ringing a bell. <clears throat> it's like something that I totally knew at the time and then just forgot about. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, oh, I remember this, you know, but okay. I hadn't thought of it years yeah but yeah he just sort of like pops up in things and he goes all over the place after this you know like uh, tv movies and then i think the most significant thing he got other than just one episode walk-ons was he got a series called maniac mansion which was based yes. on videos and i knew um, about that because of being a member in long standing of the uh star wars fan club <laughs> and the getting the um the Bantha Tracks uh, newsletters uh, that would come uh, four times four times a year, and it was that time where you're like, I don't know, should I still be in this club? Like, I'm, <laughs> you know, like Star Wars is done, you know, and Temple of Doom came out. I don't know, are they, they going to do anything else? You know, whatever. And so they would, you know, in the newsletter they would report on anything, you know, like 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 one cover of Bantha Tracks was. Uh, that that photo of Lucas, Jim Henson, and David Bowie uh, for Labyrinth. Like, this is what yeah. Lucas is up to. And then there was a big article on Maniac Mansion because I think it was a it was a, a Lucas, Lucas Arts game or something like that. Was it, it was like a video game that became a show? Yes, I believe it was a Lucas Arts game, and it says Lucas created the show. I, I don't know, but again, it's got um, you know Flaherty in it, and then. Uh, John Hemphill's in it again from SCTV. Happy. He's, and the other guy who's in it is um, he's playing. He, I think he's playing the child who's like he looks like he's you know thirty, but he's really like seven or something. Oh like, yeah, George. Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 he's an adult, right? Yeah, he does the voice of uh, Beast. Beast. On, yeah, and uh, he's actually X -Men. in. He's actually in the first X Men movie. And he so is. That's right. Fun. He's got a cameo yeah. in the first. He's that's a right. trucker. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. He gets around that guy. I can't believe uh, that they didn't uh, use him more uh, mm. in the new. They're not using him in the new one, are they? Uh, they are. He is. Oh, they are. One. Yeah. Okay. They they, they switched. Uh, what's his name? Um, Gambit. I think they switched Gambit, but just about Gambit used else. to be played by the actor who was on Kung Fu: The Next Generation, and I was surprised. But yeah, that dude. That dude pops up in so much i think he was cheap chirpa on uh, the ewoks he, he does he did a million you know oh uh, bo stuff yeah yeah the, the, yeah yeah the yeah, yeah. cartoon oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, you know, he, he does pop up in movies and stuff and it's always but that but that was a, that like, voice was that he's a great voice was that like a disney a, a dis like the early disney channel that ran that maniac mansion or was it was it something else yeah it was a it, like i recall it as being um see like we only got it from one side and i think it was a ytv program here it was a canadian i think it was a canadian and american co-production and i think it's the family channel had in the united States. family channel that was yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah and i never really saw i mean I'd, I'd seen i've seen clips on youtube and stuff but i i never really saw it because i didn't have you know we I, yeah really i i think i like I'm not sure I ninety to ninety three I probably never had cable. So that's when it was on was ninety. Dude, yeah. So I think I've seen it oh. like once or twice. Um, but no, I never really watched it. I guess Eugene Levy has a credit in it, which is surprising. And, okay. And um, you know, uh, the, the music is by uh, Jane Sibbery. She's uh, she's done some pretty interesting music. She was in the Crow soundtrack. Oh. Yeah, I, Jane Sibbery. God, there's a name. She's Canadian. Yes. Redhead, right? Uh, d depending on the day, I guess. I thought, you know? Yeah, I remember her. She had some like minor kind of VH1 hit years ago. You mean on the beach? That might be it. Did that actually? Did that actually reach all the way across the border? It's just one of those things that you know, <laughs> all you had was MTV and VH1, and then suddenly you'd see like, oh, this is like, oh, the who are the Indigo Girls or whatever, you know? That, yeah. That, you know, but uh, Jane Sibbery, I, I totally remember that that name. Like, yeah, it's, not it's, quite Laurie Anderson, but kind of a an yeah, interesting... Yeah, I've, I've, I've really, 
I think the thing I like best is the song she did on the the Crow soundtrack. That I I can't answer a follow up question as to what that was, okay. but uh, okay. I remember that was like my favorite thing. But I was like Jane Sibbery, and that, that was neat to see her name there. Uh, and it also after that, uh, that show ran for three years. But during that time, he was appearing on shows like Morton and Hayes. And this I really want to bring up because remember Morton and Hayes, Morton uh, Rob Reiner. Yes, this was that again that thing that you just. I came across on TV one night and it was like, what the hell is this? Like, oh yeah. 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 You know? And it was kind of like a, they were like a Laurel and Hardy type team that, that were sort of forgotten. Yeah. It was a mock doc series kind of. Yeah. Like I've always thought Flaherty, Flaherty had a real knack for playing old timey comedians. Oh yeah. You know, like it was insane how good he was Yeah, <laughs> at that. And, and, to see him in anything, period, is like, yeah, like he's in Johnny Dangerously briefly, and you're like, I get that. He's got that going for him, you know? Yeah. yeah. And um, he's in, uh, uh, what's, here's another one. Uh, who's Harry Crumb? One of those John Candy vehicles. Oh, yeah, who's Harry Crumb? Yeah, I remember that movie. Uh, C- Candy really did suffer from being an amazing, like, I found this about Jack Black, too, where Candy's an amazing talent. Jack Black's a great talent. But you make them the star of the thing, and it's really hard to do. Like, well, I think the pro- I remember reading about Candy, you know, years and years ago, where he sort of, if he saw something in the script that said, you know, you know, Joe, you know, whatever the character is, you know, he's so fat, he falls down the thing, and fat this and fat that, he'd go like, nope, nope. Like, he just, you know, let's, he, he wanted to do things that, didn't focus on his weight and his size yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. And he was a far better actor than, I mean, God, the stuff you think we could have gotten from him. When you think about like planes, trains, and automobiles and how amazing he is in that movie, um, yeah. you just think of all the other stuff. And you know what he's brilliant in is JFK. It's, oh, yeah. He's I've got heard two, that. Yeah. two scenes in JFK and he's just. He's, just, that, he's that kind of like hip cat guy. Yeah, and uh-huh. and there's there's footage of the real guy. So when you look yeah. at the footage of the real guy, you go, oh my god, <clears throat> he completely did an impression. He just nailed it completely. With kept the sunglasses. But I, I want to point this out that uh, I think a lot of great comedians, people who can be very very funny, can be very very serious and a little scary when they want to be. And um, Candy had that. You know, he a lot of his characters are very angry and yes. scary. Yeah, um, yeah, and 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 I find Flaherty had that too, like yeah, yeah. like that, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. that 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 really brought something to the performance, you know. Yeah. You ever yeah. want to laugh, and it's not that funny, but it is. Is, is there's a, a little sketch, um, I think it's it, I think his name is like Frank Bildenhouse, and he's he hosts a carpentry show, and it's it's Candy, and he's clearly playing a a Nazi-esque German, you know, but he's, he's playing a German so well, it's kind of creeped me out a little bit, you know, and he's got a huge German shepherd and he brings it to the store and it's barking and making all the people uncomfortable. He's like, yo, yo, dirty star. You know? And it's just absolutely like he's, he, you would be terrified of this man if you went into a store. <laughs> you know? But it's funny because you're not on the receiving end of this, you know this nightmare and, and right i found i found flaherty and candy both shared that uh, yeah they could somebody getting a little you know uh, ugly with them and yeah. i i have i haven't seen stewart saves his family but i'd have to say one of flaherty's greatest 90s role if not his probably his best 90s role it's it's in happy gilmore see now that's something that i like i saw one Oh, okay. HBO. Like, I'm not a Sandler uh, person, but uh, like, trust I me, I, 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 but, but it is, it is the thing. Like, like when he died, um, I, I was because I, you know, I'm, I'm usually up very, very late, and so I, I, you know, um, who, who was the first one? Uh, one of the Murray brothers tweeted it, right? And then, right. you know, um, it wasn't Brian; it was Joel, I think, or something. Oh, and they Joel, said it, right? You know, we lost another legend. Da, 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 da. But you know, it, it it wasn't like it didn't go official until the morning, kind of. And so, but people started posting stuff because it started to kind of get around. And I just, 
it, it's interesting how the generational thing happens where you start to see more people saying, you know, happy Gilmore, like that. He's the guy in, in that, in, you know, happy Gilmore. Yeah, he's, he's F- the biggest he, takeaway in it. He's funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There's like a whole generation of people that that know him from that, that that's the that's the guy that that's. The and that's great because he's yeah, funny. Absolutely. He's absolutely funny in that yeah. with jackass. And I, I, you know, I, I used to use that all the time. <laughs> but not not with any of the inflection that he did, you know. Right. Uh, but but then again, like he just kind of went into things like the snowboard academy. Um, he's <laughs> he's in Detroit Rock City, which a lot of people really like. I'm not. Uh, oh, that's a big I fan of it. I saw that. It's um, not a film, but I, no, it's, it's it's not. That that film. Actually, a couple of moments. That film contacted me and my friend if we had a Stretch Armstrong. I remember that. Oh. And I was like, nope. And then, uh, yeah, they had it in the film. So I was like, well, they found one, you know. Oh. Um, but uh, he's in Freddy Got Fingered, which um, I've never seen. I and... see that, huh? Okay. But but again, all of these are like in, in and out. He's in a couple of scenes and that's... Yeah, yeah. That's I think he had a it. couple like, of he's... memorable things go on, like on television. Um, you know, he did some voices. And I think he's in a few King of Queens playing a priest. But there was some stuff on TV he did in the 2000s that were kind of fun. Like um, he did that 70s show with Dave Thomas again. And they played Mounties. Oh, OK. I didn't know that. Yeah, and he also and this is something that, wow, either I never saw or maybe I, I just forgot about it. But there was a pol- syndicated police academy TV series. No, I didn't know about this. Yeah, in 97 to 98. This is pre-Freaks and Geeks. Uh, like, it syndicated, you know, like, I guess it was on, like, after Xena. And, um, yeah, the only know. person, the only holdout they got from the movies was uh, Michael Winslow. The guy uh, who did all this voice and all the sound. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I ever told you my Michael Winslow story? No, but please tell me you have a Michael Winslow shelf right under the Steve Railsback one. We're all the... Uh, uh, because I, I don't wait a minute wait a minute was he in anything but police academy movies i think he was his collected works <laughs> yeah I, I might have something he was in that isn't doesn't have the words police academy <laughs> his autobiography i don't know i don't think i own space balls maybe i yeah i don't know um but he, he was the guest of honor at a toy show in florida i went to oh wow and, and my son and um they also so in the morning I go there and they've got a freak show like the guys putting nails in their doodads and um, what right on the stage and I'm sort of like I've got like a, I'm my six and I'm like yeah all right I don't know <laughs> you know like he wanted to get like a snack and it was just like okay well we'll just eat and go this is like a, was, this is like a, a toy show or a it was a toy show, show but like also like they were you know it was uh, you know kind of an edge con you know and i think there was like a tattoo studio on site and, you know but i i went there for the toys i just went there to see like mark Huckabone. were there drug um, dealers walking around too selling they had tables where they were selling heroin and stuff i you tell me uh you know, again quite a show you're old with me <laughs> and uh, show. wasn't looking to see who was holding um but uh right after that and this is what drove me out was now like 11 in the morning i'm still hanging around the show they go ladies and gentlemen mr michael winslow and he does his routine over the loudspeaker of the entire auditorium Oh, God bless. So I'm like talking to Mark Huckabone. I'm like, yeah, listen, I'll see you. It's blah, blah, blah. Wow. And it was just like, yeah, this is who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> well, I mean, after the guy drilling nails into his doodad. Yeah, that was that, that only, was breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had to get to the, the, the loudspeaker at some point to get that, wash that out of your brain. Oh, it was, it was just the craziest thing. It was it was just sort of like, okay, I think maybe that they thought that the sound wouldn't carry through the whole hall. I'm not sure. But wow. you, you could not hear. He was doing his, I think his signature bit is Jimi Hendrix doing the Star Spangled Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
So he, so wait, so, so Flaherty was in the police Academy syndicated show series with Michael Winslow. And then he gets, cause freaks and geeks was 99. I want to say. Yeah, I think. Okay. And that had to be one of those, like they went for him. Oh, that they wanted like, for sure. They had to go. This is the guy we want for the dad, pure and simple. No, no mm -hmm. argument. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I just assume that he didn't read for that. You know, he didn't have to come in and, you know, it, because it felt it, like he was precast. Yeah. Yeah. Like a love letter to like, this is the guy to play the dad. And it, he's so good in it. He's so, yeah. he's still Flaherty. He's still doing those like, what, 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 you know, but he's like a, a decent dad. And he's like trying to figure his kids out. And he's, you know, there's that episode where he, he um, the Jason Fiegel character, who's kind of like crashing on the couch. I don't know what's going on with his parents or something. And, and he's, he's loves, you know, he wants to be a drummer. And then Flaherty says, well, you've, have you ever heard Buddy Rich? Oh my, you've never heard Buddy Rich. Cause he's always gone on about Rush and how great Rush are and everything. And he starts playing him these, and it's just, it's like, it's, it's one of the better episodes, but, but it's really a showcase for Flaherty. Mm. trying to help this d guy who's not his kid turn him on to something but also kind of like you know you're gonna have to get off the couch at some point you need to get your you know do you, you want to be a drummer or what What else do you want to do or kind of thing and and Flaherty's just he's effortless in it and I forget the woman who you know she's done loads of stuff but the woman who played the the, the wife was was and the mother on and that was wonderful too mm. and she was in uh Oh, she was in that Sam Raimi, uh, A Simple Plan, which is a great, like, modern kind of kind of noir thing. Um, and lots of stuff she's been in. But they just, they were a totally believable kind of mixed couple. couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, they really time. worked. Yeah. yeah. Now, I yeah. think that, you know, his career started to kind of wind down around the 2000s. I can't believe this is 2002 already. But I, I watched this on um, CBC when it aired. It was... Uh, the True Meaning of Christmas Specials. Have you ever seen this? It's uh, Dave Foley. Um, and it's like he just created his own variety special. Uh, oh. he's, got, he's got Dick Dale, Mike Myers, uh, Bing Crosby, which is actually... Um, Flaherty? Flaherty. Oh, uh, wow. And okay. uh, yeah, and it was... I, I watched this. I remember watching this. Uh, wow. I forgot Flaherty was in it. Uh, but yeah, like Tom Green's in it, and um, Jason Priestley, Andy Richter, Dave Thomas. Oh, he's Bob Hope, right? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And Kevin McDonald. Yeah, this was a one-off uh, CBC special for Christmas. Okay, so it wasn't a U.S. thing. It was over there. No, no, no. I just remember it because um, I think Dave Foley goes to Mike Myers' house at one scene, and this was Myers. It was amazing, you know? And Mike Myers is sitting in a bathtub full of money. <laughs> And he's like, Dave, dear, dear, a little more money on the pool. In the, you know, the <laughs> it, was, it was a funny, you know, uh, very gentle joke. But then, yeah, he started working like, I, this is when I kind of started to feel like, oh, God, like, is he okay? Like, uh, doing a lot of Canadian shows. And he ended up, like, on a show called Chili Beach, which actually, weirdly enough, I know someone who worked on that. Um, and then he ended up on a show, uh, a comedy network put on a, like a, a very low budget, almost cable accessy looking show called caution may contain nuts. And he was not only on it, but he was doing count Floyd. Oh, wow. And, and guy Caballero and they were advertising it, you know, with his SCTV characters. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, I checked it out and I was like, oh, God, you know, like just very low budget. Not not and so he would. But he was he was born in, in Pittsburgh. America, in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but yeah. Did he and, and weirdly enough, the, the three famous people like come from that area. Uh, Mr. Rogers, um, uh, uh, Joe Flaherty and, and someone else who I can't remember. And they all had shows in Toronto. <laughs> Yeah, and did he did he live? Did he George Romero? That's the other thing. Yeah. Did um, did, uh, did oh yeah Romero did did but did he did Flaherty live in in Canada then the, for most of his life? He must have at some point. Um, you know, living <clears throat> like I don't really know, but I assume during the you know the uh, the Second City days and the SCTV days, he absolutely lived in Canada. Um, but you know, 
being a dual citizen, I, I imagine that, you know, and Pittsburgh is not that far away from Toronto. Right. Um, I go to Pittsburgh all the time. Right. I just, you know, I, 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 I wish he would have been used more, you know, the last, you know, 20 years or so or 15 yeah. years. Yeah. Whenever his health went. And, I, and I'm not casting, you know, aspersions. I'm not saying that, you know, why didn't the phone ring or whatever? But, you know, there was. You know, n- not long ago, not long before he died, there was a post that kind of went around that, you know, Martin Short was kind of organizing, uh, uh, t- you know, taking uh, people, you know, pledging uh, money that help out with, you know, um, the health issues and, and everything. And it was just kind of heartbreaking. I just thought, you know, these guys that have known him all these years and the ones yeah. that are incredibly sick, you know, and I'm, again, I, I don't know what was done or who did what. And I've said, this yeah, yeah, we never will. Yeah. You know, about things during COVID where you'd go like, where's Elton John, you know, pulling out his checkbook to save the troubadour or whatever. Um, but Flaherty, it just seemed like he just kind of, you know, faded into the background, sort of. And you'd, you'd think that he'd show up in more things that that more people were were doing. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe he didn't want to work as my I, I don't know. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know either. I um, yeah. I when I, he canceled the show, but I did grab an autograph. Oh, good. Uh, and it's you know, I've got a portrait of him I painted and uh, I've got that autograph on the wall. And that would know, that was important. He was. Like, you know, I'll never meet Candy, but I think that was the member of SCTV I most wanted to meet. Um, yeah, he was he was I mean, for me, it was probably um, it was probably Martin Short. But that's you know, that's that he was later. You know, I wanted to meet them all, basically. But like, yeah, you know, Short and Moranis and Flaherty and Candy were always kind of the the the. The standouts and flair. I thought I even thought Guy Caballero was hysterical. Like yeah. it, it just and those get those bits go on forever too. Like mm-hmm. some of those just talk. You know, hi, you're in my office, and let's tell you what we're doing at SDTV right now. <laughs> just it's always it's like, a sham, though. It's always yeah, like, yeah. Like behind the curtain is a bunch of like scotch tape and and prayer, yeah. and that's the best part about him. And the fact that he's he can walk. <laughs> He can walk. He doesn't need to be in a wheelchair. Oh yeah, that he's pathetic. He thinks that's <laughs> going to make people respect him. And and that's like when so he does crazy. characters like Vic Hedges. Um, <laughs> they always have a, a terrible flaw. And like Vic Hedges makes me laugh because he's like, um, he he clearly has a pot thing, and he keeps <laughs> saying, "Yeah, I can't play there because somebody planted a reefer on me." You know, <laughs> he says that like. And and um, I doubt they ever released this episode again on on any sort of service or platform. But there's a, an episode where they're parodying um, Black Like Me. Okay. Uh, it's called Black Like Vic. And okay. Vic, Vic's so dumb he thinks he looks convincing. <laughs> and and that's the whole joke of the thing. And and it's it's funny because he doesn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> And even when he gets home, he's like, I gotta write a book about this. I'm gonna call it Black Like Vic. And <laughs> she's like, There's already a very popular book called Black Like Me. And he, he said something <laughs> to the point of like, Yeah, but this one's gonna be about me. <laughs> you know, it's just, just He just he and the and the one, you know, the way that he that look you know, Johnny LaRue would always kind of lock horns with him and or he you know, he'd Oh yeah. You know, yeah. he kind of always threaten him that, you know, you've got to get the ratings up or you've got to, what about this? And they, the rhythm of Ka- he and Candy together was yeah, just they're a fantastic. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, with, 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 no, Levy was in Splash as well. Eugene Levy was in Splash. Candy was in Splash, but so was Eugene Levy. Yeah. That was Flair- another reason I probably saw it. it was Flaherty just- wasn't in Splash. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was just, it just those great times when you'd see a face and go, oh, that, you know, the, the, you know, like Stripes, like seeing him in Stripe, uh, you know, it just felt like, stripes. oh, oh you know what else fun. he's in? Is, um, uh, wait, maybe I'm, maybe, maybe I got too excited. He's in 1941, Joe Flair. Is he really? I'm almost positive. He's like the yeah, MC at a club not. where the big fight scene happens. I think he might be in that too. I have never fully 
given that a chance. And that's another one that's, you know, John Candy's in it, uh, uh, Belushi, Aykroyd, I think Flaherty, mm. and maybe somebody else from from that that pool of people. But I think Flaherty's Edward in Edward Deason's in that. Eddie Deason, the great Eddie Deason. Um, he is. I, he's any. He, <clears throat> his character's name is Raul Lipschitz. <laughs> wait, wait, Joe Flaherty? Yeah, in 1941. <laughs> but see, that's another. That's again a Spielberg movie, but written by. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it's written by Galen Zemeckis, right? Didn't they? Didn't they write that? Could be. Yeah. Oh, right. It was yeah, originally. Okay. A horrible yeah. title that you could never get away with, even then. What was the script was originally called? I I, sh I shan't repeat it here, but you can look it up. Um, but that connection there with, you know, and I mean, Pepper might have been in 1941 too. Maybe I could be getting that wrong. I know she's in. Back oh no, she's in. She's in. Um, is it Zemeckis? I can't find Do I want to hold your hand? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I want to hold your hand. Yeah, she said I want to hold your yeah. hand. Yeah, Deason's in that, too. So Deason's I think in that there's too. something to be said about what you're trying to say. Yeah, like just these faces that you go like, oh, so they... And then Zemeckis does uh, uh, direct uh, used cars, which I believe was his first directing job. And there's Flaherty again. Um, it, so Flaherty is in 1941 then, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Right. I remember he's in like a white tuxedo jacket. And I think he's kind of like the either the owner of the club or he's kind of like an MC or something. And he's got a few scenes and, you know, just that wonderful time of the late seventies where, you know, all these, all this talent, all these faces that all came from a similar start show up in these, in these much bigger things. And it was like a comfort, you know, to see them when they'd show up in things, you know, I didn't see 1941 in the theater. Um, but you know, I rented it on VHS, you know, whatever, whenever they were trying to really swears by it, but I just don't, I don't, I tried and, uh, so it's just not something I need to, it's not, it, it's not a disaster. I think for years it was made out to be like this, you know, how could this possibly happen kind of thing. And it's, it's not that at all. In fact, it's much better than, than it was ever given credit for it at the, at the time. Um, and it's, I want to just point thing. out that I was googling something about that sketch show he was on and i didn't realize that it was actually um pretty pretty in innovative of him to do i feel bad now because i didn't realize that that was an edmonton based uh, comedy group of um indigenous first nations people oh well <clears throat> And I he was helping feel, out. And um, hope you feel good about how you trashed it a few minutes ago. Well, no, ago. I, now I feel bad. They didn't have any budget, right? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but a Canadian, that's Canadian broadcasting in general. But that's actually. Yeah. He's know, actually. I found a couple of clips of him on what, what it looks like a kid's show from like 77 or so, where he's, he's hosting a game show on the show. Wait a minute. I, I want to, I, before we sign off, I want to make sure I know what that is. Um, and it's like he's wearing like a silver, you know, it's totally 1977, 78 kind of thing. And he's got like, yeah, there's, there's a couple of TVO shows that would have aired around that time that like Short appeared on. And Candy, of course, was on Cucumber as the weatherman. Um, you know, what's Sunshine Hour? That might be it. Maybe that's it. And it, and I think it was a runner that would be in the show where it was like, it's time for, you know, count to 10 or whatever it was. And then he, you know, he had like a mar like a, a spaceman came on and spoke in like beeps and stuff. And yeah, this could be, I, d I don't, I, there's almost nothing about it and I have to look it up, but it does have, and this would be interesting to me, uh, Levy and Martin in it as well. Uh, CBC morning show. Yeah, just, it's just a sunshine hour and that's it. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's what that, it is. That's I mean, probably it, um, because there I mean, isn't a lot of children's stuff in Joe Flaherty, you know, until like the, the Ed Grimley series. To have YouTube, that these things, that, oh, goodness, you know, yeah. would just be memories that you'd have to, you know, somehow find proof of. That well, you you and I both remember being Doctor Who fans and like having that whole situation where you would have people remembering episodes that are no longer 
available anywhere and that you would read those and like you'd feel like you were watching the show. Well, you know, it's funny. The other day I got a call for somebody got, you know, David J. Howe, who had done some Doctor Who books, got this guy in touch with me who's doing a book on uh, the history, the, every Dalek toy ever made, kind of. He's trying to, you know, be as extensive as he can. And they're going to publish it over there. And he, we've been changing, exchanging uh, messages, uh, Facebook messages. And we got on the phone the other day. And he, uh, his doctor was, was Davison. Like he saw some Baker when he was a kid, but then Davison was really his, his doctor. And, you know, when I, you know, he was asking me lots of questions about how I discovered the show and when the this and that. And it was almost like there was a little bit of jealousy of like, oh, well, you got to see it all the time, you know, because they just didn't, they didn't repeat it over there. You know, like here we, you get them in the, in the, in the packages, like the time life package of like two or three seasons of of Tom Baker and then you know we'd get him on Friday nights on PBS and then getting the yeah we had Doctor Who uh, twice a week on TVO and then when the PBS affiliate picked it up it was like eight days a week of Doctor Who yeah and then I don't even know if they got because remember in like 85 80 I want to say 85 86 and suddenly the big announcement was good news America all every all the existing stuff that's that you haven't seen you're getting packages of now and they started with an unearthly child and suddenly for the first time certainly in the twin cities there was you know got to see all the hartnell all, all the trouton all the pertwee ones and they played them in order and um you know the uk was kind of jealous like well how can we <laughs> They just didn't, yeah. they, you know, and so it became much more of a memory Take thing. Take your one VHS of yeah. Revenge of the Cybermen. Yeah, your, your <laughs> audio <favorite> cassette. Story. <laughs> yeah, your audio cassette copy that you had, too, and piece it together. And um, Hey, so, I have a Legopolis somewhere. That, there was like an audio book, wasn't there? There was, a, there was a Tom Baker audio book of State of Decay. There's a, there's like, really? it was, I remember it being in one of these UK catalogs of trying to get whatever I could. And it was just a bizarre, you know, that he reads like an, an abridged version of State of Decay. You know, it's one of the last things he did merchandise wise. Was, was that a book. Terrence Dix? It was um. a Terrence Dix. It was <laughs> because it, it was because it was meant to be on in the, in the seventies. Oh, like I know. But, I mean, it, it, you really, you're really betting um, with the house if you choose Terrence Dix, right? Uh, because he's so, um, he, he's so um, uh, synonymous with those books. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, and it was a Terrence Dix story that was a script that sat around since the seventies, and then they yeah. brought it into into eighty one because they there was like a Louis Jordan. Uh, Dracula series that was going to be on or something, and so they they canceled it. But I but remember yeah, that he read Baker read State of Decay, and it's just this this box with a picture of him, you know, eighty one style picture of him on it, State of Decay, and it was like just such a weird, you know what I mean? Like those 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 the audio things that were out there, like the Pescatons and the the Genesis of the Daleks record and the sound effects record, and then like oh, let's have him read State of Decay before he leaves. Yeah, like, well, I guess, you know, the look at, let's think about that season. That is the most merchandisable episode of it. I oh, would say. absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, like, I, what, I, what are you going to do with Warrior's Gate? Explain what it meant? Like, I yeah. still don't know what, Logopolis. what that's about. The Logopolis yeah. board game. Let's get that, <laughs> get that, get that going. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I would prefer to play, uh, Logopolis to Castro Volva. Yeah, I just, you know, the, the Oh, it's just it's 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 mathy goodness, isn't it? The things we we sat through as kids to, you know, because we we kind of had to, you know, to see these things and just what is going on? Like the I remember the one, the Davidson, I know we're getting away from Flaherty, but there's that Davidson. Wow, are we far? <laughs> and I can't remember which Davidson one it is, but he's he's floating in space. And he takes out a cricket ball from his pocket. Yeah, that's Fort of Doomsday. <laughs> Fort, 
Board of Doomsday. And the helmet doesn't even have like a shield. <clears throat> on the no, front. it's just, and it's like, it's like um, oversized foam novelty cowboy yes. astronaut helmet. Yeah. Yeah. And he throws the ball and that he catches it or something and it gives him the force to get back inside the ship. You know what? I've seen that episode maybe twice in my life. And I can tell you right now, when that ball comes back, the music goes like, da -da -da -da, like. <laughs> well, you know, you could be this guy that I talked to the other day and he could that could have been your doctor. Davison is his doctor. So he got those stories. He is a true fan. Yes. Because that is not the show at its best, in my opinion. No. Yet there's still enough in it that he went, I love this show. And his favorite story is, a favorite Dalek story, is Resurrection of the Daleks. Is that and the Baker one? Colin Baker? No, the, um, the, the, uh, the Davidson one in, the, in his final season, oh, I think. God, I hate that one. And then right. his second favorite, his second favorite is Revelation of the Daleks, which is the Colin Baker one. That's yeah, that's a, a lot of people really like that one. I hate it too. I don't hate it as much as Davison's. Um, I think I hate it more. I'm using hate a lot in this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot I, I just like the Davison one more, but um, the Colin Baker years were, you know, troubled for me. And um, yes, they were, they were for all of us, including Colin. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Actually, you know, I did this. The one guy I don't blame. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. He would have. He would have given his all for that. But you know, it's all kind of connected, isn't it? PBS, Etsy TV, Doctor Who. You know. Um, What's it all mean? By all this stuff. It's kind of. It's the stuff you had to kind of hunt for, and um, you know, the more the you know the more you think about the you know, SCTV when it was airing, the more of a miracle Bob and Doug kind of becomes in America, that suddenly there's that moment where they're huge and the radio play, you know, and now I don't think the movie did that well, but still they got a movie made. Um, and I saw the, the movie, twice. I think did very well here. Okay. Uh, but I don't think that SCTV was the blues brothers or SNL in terms of the states um it was yeah i just yeah yeah and also like it is a uniquely you know like what, what's that I, I tried to watch those a few years ago this australian uh, movie uh after that um dame edna uh performer died i watched one of his uh or one of the, the films he made for the australian oh, the market very Barry McKenzie. Barry Humphreys or something Barry, like that. Barry Humphreys, but then it was something Mackenzie was the character, the Australian yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. It, it's very much cut of the same cloth of Bob and Doug. In yeah. That there's a relatability to it, but it's also just so full of jokes, uniquely Canadian. Yeah. And uh, that it's, and, and I don't mean to sound snottish, but like I watched that Barry Humphreys movie there, and it was just like, this is unbearably unfunny because I don't get the like the, the who this guy's supposed to be i don't you know like you you run into a bob and doug wherever you go and i think some americans get that i but, think we got it and i mean my friends and i and like my dad should we, we saw it i think two or three times i saw it in the theater yeah. because it was very midwestern it was very yeah I, I, that's know, what i'm trying to say is like yeah America's jelly very, donuts very big and, country and i don't know how yeah. relatable they would be yeah. In Texas or yeah. Florida, like it's not. It it really is like a regional thing, and it it defies borders. I'm not trying to say that like a Minnesotan wouldn't get it, find it funny, yeah. but it is sort of like yeah, but they're sort of in Canada in a way. Yeah, you know, like we all kind of have a similarity. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so yeah, it, it wasn't. It was a regional hit sort of thing. And uh, it also like kind of broke up the Beatles a little bit for a while there because it did. It did. Though right. there was jealousy, and and it's 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 the I think it's one of the few like SCTV cast things that only has like it only has Bob and Doug in it. Yeah. Um, no one else cameos in that movie. Yeah. That's weird. And then to follow it up for Moranis right afterwards to get into Ghostbusters, which yeah. was just monumentally huge. And it was it was a part meant for candy. 
Candy was supposed to be. I think that it was a part character. meant for Belushi, and then. No, I uh, think Belushi was one of the was one of the team. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah, I, he was. Yeah, one I remember of the team. Candy in the storyboards. Yes. And for some reason, I remember the audio commentary. Harold Ramis saying, or 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 Reitman said, for some reason, Candy and he wanted to have like two Dobermans or something. Um, as he wanted to have dogs. Hey, that's something. sort of like the character I'm talking about, uh, Carl Bildenhausen. He's some weird thing, and however it didn't work out, and you see him in the storyboards, and then Miranda slides in, and it's like, oh my god, this is the biggest comedy you know, of the year, big, you know, it was, it was massive. And Moranis did, did very well, you know, after that. And, yeah, uh, of course he did. Yeah. And he's, he's in Club Paradise as well. Yes. And although I did not see uh, uh, any comment from him about Flaherty, I, I've seen the Martin Short one and I think Steve Martin, you know, the different things on social media, but I haven't heard from, I don't know if I've heard from everybody from the team about about Joe, but maybe I should look look harder and not. Yeah, I don't know where you. I don't think Rick Moranis has any sort of like social media. Probably not, but you'd think there'd be like a statement that would make its way out, and you know, uh, the Martin Short. I think I showed you. I sent you that interview, and it was just like, just like this cringy. The the woman interviewing him, like you know, did you ever laugh with Joe, or you know, or did you? Uh. Did you think he was funny? It's like, oh, come on. Man, you know, George well, doing his I'm best right. to, yeah, yeah. But um, we were lucky to have lived in a Joe Flaherty world and all these guys. And, um, you know, I say this as someone who's very funny. I'm not going to lie. I'm never going to dunk a basketball. I'm not the, you know, not the greatest. I'm modest. Don't I'm not, I'm not the greatest modest. lover in the world, but I'm close, very close to being the greatest lover of all time. I never know. Um, but, Humor wise, you know, like we're 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 those kinds of, like we 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 laugh at a lot of different stuff, but we we kind of we know like genius when we when we see it. And oh, yeah, we were we exposed it. to a, a lot of the best of the best stuff. And, you know, we measure everything after kind of, you know, buy it sometimes, you know, and, and it doesn't live up and it's not what was better when we were it's just no, they just we got very lucky with who we were exposed to and um, you know, what, how we kind of were, you know, we're brought up with this stuff. So. And thankfully, you, uh, you know, a lot of people can be exposed to it to this day. Yes. Uh, you know, it's been preserved. Uh, there's original, there's episodes of SCTV on, on YouTube that I haven't seen since I was a kid because yeah. some of the yeah. sketches have been cut out of syndication and some of them should be. Uh, so but, if anything, uh, if we've done anything in this program, it's to say, get yourself more acquainted if you're not with SCTV. Although I think the the twelve or thirteen listeners we have are big SCTV fans, but um, expose we yourself. Have. If we, I hope we've exposed ourselves uh, sufficiently in this episode, if you know what I mean. I, th I think it's I think it's been uh, an indecent exposure. Sir. Yes, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So here's raise, raise a glass to, to Joe Flaherty. And I uh, do. He I do. And I'm going to watch a scary movie tonight in his honor. There you the go. Odd. There you go. Put the record on and then hit play on the on the scary movie. Yeah, that's going to be uh, the, the odd couple. See, uh, Jack Klugman plays a uh, sports writer who's sloppy and drinks blood. You haven't you haven't really appreciated the odd couple until you've seen the odd couple, too. That's when it really gets good. Is the, that the, the uh, is that the is that the uh, uh, the, the Walter Matthau? Yeah, um, they made a sequel. I, I, I passed on that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Surprise. Oh, you, I, I, yeah, you yeah you missed out. There's it's, there's still I, time. There's yeah, still I, time. I knew. I thought Grumpy Old Men was fun, and I was like, oh, these two are gonna be like Leslie Nielsen into everything possible, and it's yeah. like none of it will be any good because Grumpy Old Men was just a funny original idea well they you know? did i think they did a second one of those they did the odd yeah. couple two and then they did another one two if by c or something like they did like a cruise ship movie well, I, think and it was just, I think brent spiner's in it too like what other show could you have that's about joe flaherty where we could we could wrap it up with uh the the last works of lemon and Mathau uh, uh together uh and and bring up uh brent spiner your favorite character from Star Trek: The Next Generation. <laughs> you know, I was just uh, 
my kids are my kids are making fun of like you know you're talking about like forgotten 90s movies and my kids were really amusing themselves at the notion of like imagine being the kids parents who got beat by Airbud, you know yeah Airbud six <laughs> yeah it's like or no they were talking about like the, there's like apparently there's air buds where it's just little puppies you know and it's like imagine you, you're at your kid's soccer game and a bunch of puppies are kicking <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, I, I leave you with that. It has nothing to do with Joe Flaherty. Yeah, that's a good that's a good button there to wrap it up. So there you go. That's our tribute to Joe Flaherty. Um, I hope uh, loved him. Yeah, we loved him and and still do. And thankfully, we've got loads of of uh, clips and things that he was in to appreciate all over again. Let let me know in the comments or in the group. We're gonna start a thread. I want to know your favorite Joe Flaherty SCTV character. What would yours be, Jason? It's got to be Count Floyd. I mean, it's yeah. just it's. I think of I think of, I always think of Kirk Douglas because it was such an insane. I'd never seen something like that. I'd never seen yeah. an impression that was so off the wall. Um, and I got it right away. You know, and, and I, at that point, I'd only seen you know. I don't know how many Kirk Douglas, but I just knew kind of who he was with the chin and the, um, but Floyd is just, he's just, it's just perfection to me. It's just the turtleneck, the cape, you know. Well, and and for me, I think it's also like that also Floyd was connected to Dr. Tongue and Bruno. Yeah. And that whole, that whole universe they created, like I, 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 I don't think I have more favorite SCTV characters than those three. No, the, the, the 3D so house, funny. the three D House of Beef, and the Taxi Driver uh, uh, episode. Like when they do that, and no, I'm sorry, Midnight Cowboy. And I knew Midnight Cowboy. Like I'd seen, I hadn't seen the whole thing. I don't think at that point, but I knew enough of it, and I'd seen it on somewhere up the dial. I, you know, I guess to get the joke. But it didn't matter because it was Candy and Eugene yeah. Levy. Candy dressed like a freaking cowboy. Howdy, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Walking down the street. And, and I then think the 3D... my favorite thing is is uh, Ratso telling him, you know, uh, you're not doing a very good job as a hustler. There's no ladies in here. And he's at uh, Count Floyd's, or sorry, Dr. Tung says something like, Oh, I, I'm sorry. Am I am I impeding you? I didn't notice Miss Marianne Mobley coming by. And it's just it's so he, well he, written. He's just like, don't call me. He's like, Ratso, 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 Ratso. He keeps saying Ratso over again to like piss him off or something. And <laughs> Marianne Mobley. <laughs> yeah, but but the the three of them oh. are really funny together as well, and it's yeah. just sort of it's bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bizarre thing, and I I love it. I love it to death. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that, I'm gonna go find that right now. Actually, I want to yeah. see them do that. So I gotta go put on some SCTV because that'll clear the room. The kids Perfect. do not like. It. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Easy peasy. Hey, it works. All right. Well, thanks, thanks everybody. everybody. And we'll talk to you soon. All right, I'm gonna press, and then I'm gonna go pee a lot. All right, go pee a lot. That was great.